the early break they made. I thought we went that very well, but then there was a try, and we actually had to we actually had to fight today, didn't we? We had to fight. And we had to show a lot of the good qualities. Um, I think obviously the players really got their heads around things at half time about what was really required, and obviously territory was going to be huge in the game. We did that so much better. I mean, probably when you look, thank you, Steve. Probably the thing of that, you know, I've just grabbed Hoggy in the change room. I said. When you didn't kick that first ball you got, and you tried out the back of the hand, and out offload the back of your hand, I kind of sat there and went, "Oh dear, that's probably not what we should be doing today." Well, it's not probably what we should be doing. It's definitely what we shouldn't have been doing. But actually, we we did okay. We dealt with a few of those things, and then actually, and then you look at the second half. And Stuart was a key decision maker in some of our tactical kicking and where we got the ball to, and we just started to do that. And obviously, that hurts Glasgow. Glasgow do want to play a little bit. Um, and I think that pressurised just a lot of the rest of the game for them. We did, we did kind of in the second half what we've been setting out to do all week, which was to create a really difficult pressure environment for Glasgow to deal with. We didn't do that so well in the first half, but we did it exceptionally well in the second half. Jack Noel came back in for his first start today and he made a big difference, created space for a couple of the tries. What did you make of Jack's return? Uh, a little bit like, I mean, what's, what's fantastic to me is I know he's nowhere near 100% yet. Um, and that doesn't mean that he's, he's not necessarily fit to play, but he's not at op absolutely optimum levels yet. You know, that ankle, you know, is going to take a little bit of, you know, time and, 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 and intensive treatment to get to being 100%. Um, but he's there, and I think there was, there was particularly one moment he created that led to a try that was as, as close to world class as you could ask for, you know. He's got no space, and he appears out the other side of three or four defenders and then makes a good pass, and we're, and we're gone. You, you won't see another player in England do that. You genuinely won't. And I think that's what you saw today. You saw you saw some quality from our front end players. I thought Slady was exceptional today. You know, Nick White very good. You know, Sam Sam Simmons, uh, Joe Simmons grew. Sam Simmons was very good. You know, some of those front line international quality players really stuff. And that's what you really need in the Heineken Cup. Um, and then obviously everybody else really underpinned that with some real solidity, particularly in the second half. And our set piece just grew. Our forwards grew in stature. You know, our forwards created the second half, which I was hoping for. You know, I was hoping for a little bit more of that all game. It took us a little bit of a while, but then that that's probably me being a bit over ambitious in a way, because the one thing that any quality game of rugby needs is a bit of attrition and a bit of wear and tear. And not many teams do buckle early. But I think we certainly we certainly grew today and it's it's just given us a fantastic total in the competition. What message does this send to the rest of the clubs in Europe? Two bonus point wins in a row and doing what you've done to Glasgow second half today? Uh, well, may, maybe not that different to the messages we've been sending for a few years because, I mean, was it, a couple of years ago we won our first two pool games. Um, so we've done it before. Um, but the, the important thing is that, you know, I think we are growing in stature and we're growing in maturity. The, the players who have been front-end performers for us are now uh, are becoming into their mid, mid 20s moving on you know that 26 27 age range and we're just starting to grow in experience and stature and we didn't we didn't end up in a, with a team that got panicky and edgy when it was tight at half time we actually looked like a team that knew how to take control of the game and we took on some simple messages and we drove those exceptionally hard as a team and things came through and all these experiences are just adding up for us all the time and they're the things we've got to will benefit from as we as we just keep growing as a team. Stuart Hogg, how do you think he did today? Did very well, like I say, other than that very first pass piece of play, where I think, um, like I say, I'll, I've just said to him in the change room, so he, he, I won't need to analyse it too much more with him next week because he knew straight away. He said, the first thing he said to him was, "Oh, Gary, what have you just done that for?" So I think he, I think he knew, but at the same time, if he was ever going to make a mistake, it was going to be a bit of over ambition to get stuck back into Glasgow. Was it? Was it there was ever a game where he was going to? maybe have a little, a little, little bit of over-enthusiasm, make a mistake, it happened, and it happened today. But then he dealt with that very well and he managed to move on, and then he's taken a big part in the rest of the game. You know, he's, he's going to be an exceptional player for him. Looking at him, looking at some of the stuff that he did last week, you can see he's going to be an exceptional player for him. He's going to add that, he's going to add that gloss of quality on top of some very strong bases, very strong in the air, he's got a very strong kicking game. You know, he's got a very strong community of game about organising the backfield. There's a lot of good sound basics there, and we haven't actually seen him really get much space yet and really go for things. And when we do, you know, we're really going to see like a, see the firecracker that he is in action. He, he seems to be showing signs of linking well with Jack, doesn't he? Uh, the, these guys, for each other. They, they know each other already from spending time together, you know, obviously on international duty, but also with the Lions. Uh, they're aware of each other's strengths. You know, we, we, we've got a back three that's going to thrive. You know, Alex Cuthbert 
Hopefully we'll get him back from injury relatively shortly with Tom O'Flaherty flight, thriving with the game time he's been getting and he's doing exceptionally well. Was Alex injured today? Alex, yeah, Alex picked up a, a bit of a hamstring injury. We're still, we're still going to be assessing that for a little while. Um, but overall, you know, we're, we're really comfortable with our options. I thought, you know, we're, we're just like I said, I just thought we looked, we looked strong across the field today and we grew in stature. The important thing with anything is watching the game grow and we grew today and that's what we want to keep seeing. And Joe what, Simmons can't miss, can he, at the moment? Yeah, Joe Simmons is, is kicking exceptionally well. I mean, every, you know, every, every try from wherever it is is looking like a seven point for us. And when you look at the end of that game, you know, Glasgow score a late try. They've actually scored a decent amount of points there, but we've, we've kind of left them behind. And a huge part of that is all those is those points that come from conversions and penalties. It just gives you breathing space that sometimes you don't get in another game. Even when they pushed him out wide with the two conversions, yeah. that he nailed them. That's right. No, he's kicking exceptionally well. Uh, Good. Rob, there was, a, there, was a, there was a second half blitz. What was said at half time? Did you did you foresee that at half time or? All we said at half time is look, guys, in any in any in anything in life, you get back what you kind of put in. You know, we had 40 minutes left. 40 minutes is the blink of an eye in anybody's life, really. And if you get your heads down and work exceptionally hard, you, things will often go your way. And actually, what we did was we actually worked really hard at the important things. So we directed our energy at the things that were really important, which at the time were going to be a bit of front foot ball that could allow us to kick well. And when we could kick well, then the energy in our kick chase and then, and then the energy in the discipline when we were in the opposition 22 to stay there until we got the outcome we wanted. And I just thought we did that really well. And then obviously we backed that up with a, a little bit of a, a stronger set piece that just kept the momentum our way. Um, and ultimately things grew and we, and we grew from that. And we, we actually just grew from the pressure we created more than anything else, I think. Jack Yandel came off early. Um, not why the injury, I presume? Yeah, he's taking a bang, bang to the middle of his forearm that's just preventing him from gripping properly. So obviously until we look at it, give it a couple of x-ray scan, we're not going really to know whether it's nervy, whether he's banged a nerve in there, whether it's muscular, whether it's whether it's skeletal or injury, we don't really know until we um, x-ray assess it.